What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope all you had a great weekend. Hope you all had a great day today. Getting into this episode of GH, um, I freaking love Ava and Nicholas as a couple. I love it. They look good together. That chemistry is on point. They're everything I love in a couple, first of all, because they got that crazy love. Like, if you know what I mean, like they look good together. They love each other, but they're not afraid to go to war with each other or for each other when necessary. That's the type, I love that type of, you know, TV couple. That's, I love that shit. That's, that's fun. That's, that's a fun couple. Um, so Ava got her real gift from Nicholas. It was a bracelet. Um, Nicholas engraved the date that they met on it. That was some cute shit. I love that. That was super dope that he did that for her. Like, he engraved the date that they met on the bracelet. Come on now. That's hot. That's romantic. That's some romantic stuff. Um, and, you know, Nicholas always promised to keep her safe. I'm, I'm loving the two of them, man. I'm like, yo, Ava, you need to pop out a Cassidine baby. Like, I'm just saying, you're not that old. You're not up there yet in age. To some people, you may be. But I'm like, you ain't 50. You got a few couple more years before you hit 50. You could pop out another child real quick. We need that Nicholas and Ava baby. I need it. I need a Jerome Cassidine heir. I need that. Um, but of course, they're wondering where the hell that first gift came from, that cockroach. Um, so they asked one of the waiters or whatever, and he said that the gift came before his shift, but it did come with a letter for Ava. And the letter was weird. Like, it was something to the effect of secrets and cockroaches survive except for us. I'm like, who the hell sent that gift? Some people were saying Spencer. I'm thinking Ryan. I'm like, I don't think Spencer sent that. Because the note was a bit weird. If it wasn't for that note, I probably would have bought that Spencer maybe had sent that. But the note, the note is throwing me off. I'm like, the only person I know sick enough to send some shit like that would be Ryan. So, of course, Nicholas called Jordan and Jordan was like, no, it couldn't have been Ryan because he's still paralyzed. I'm like, that man playing, y'all. He's playing. Y'all ain't nothing wrong with Ryan. Ryan is pulling an okie doke. That's what he's doing. He ain't that crazy. That man, he crazy, but he's definitely, he know how to be smart and conniving. And that's exactly what he's doing right now. Um... And both Ava and Nicholas both think it's Ryan, too. I'm like, because he crazy. That man is nuts. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. I'm going to need for Jason and Britt to get together like today. I'm going to need it to happen. I need it to happen right now. Writers, I don't care what you have to do. Make it happen because, listen, the way she was looking at Jason, the way Jason was looking at her, they was looking at each other like hot sex on the platter. I'm going to need it to go down. ASAP. I need, I need this because I need Jason to be with somebody new. I need for Sam to be a distant memory in his life. And I need for Sam to move on to somebody new. Um, it's just time for the change of the guard. Like, we need something new. We need to change because that relationship is tired. It's outdated. We need something. I need something new. I'm, you know, I'm not even gonna speak for y'all. I'm speak for me. I need something new, and I think Jason and Britt is that new thing that I need. I, I need it, cause Jason, he was looking at Britt like I would take you back to the crib right now. <laughs> like that's how he was looking. I was like, okay, Jason, all right. You know, it was cute though that Jason helped her deliver Valentine's Day bags to the kids and stuff. And one of the kids came up to Jason and stuff. You know. For, the, for a bag or whatever and he thanked Mr. and Mrs. Cupid that was cute I was like that was that was that, I love that I, it was a lot of cuteness with this Valentine's Day this year not not a whole lot but it was a couple couples that you know actually did it right I'll talk about the other ones who didn't do it right in a minute um but yeah Jason and you know him and Britt to me that's 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 in game I need that to happen and, you know, Jason was like, shit, he said, I, I had worse Valentine's Days, you know what I mean? Like, because he know Britt don't like to spend Valentine's Day alone, you know, she, I mean, who does? Not many people do. You know, Valentine's Day, shit, even on Valentine's Day, I was on social media hating on some of them damn couples. 
I was going through Instagram. I'm looking through my timeline. I'm like, look at all this. Look at all this love shit. I said, look at this. Look at this. Swipe, swipe, swipe up. Look at all this love. <laughs> I was hating that day. I don't give a damn. I'm, I ain't ashamed to admit it. I was like, look at all this. I mean, people was going all out. Chocolates and hotel rooms and champagne. I said, and my lonely ass was sitting at work. I said, look at this bullshit. Nah, but shout out to all the couples though. I ain't even gonna lie. Shout out that that shit was cute on Valentine's Day. I was loving it honestly. I wasn't. I was hating a little bit, but I was loving it though. Shout out to all the couples. Speaking of, if y'all did anything for Valentine's Day, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all did for Valentine's Day. What, what y'all significant other do for y'all, or what did you do? You know what I mean? If you single out there, what did you do? I'm curious. I want to know. Like, please tell me you ain't lay up watching a Lifetime or that. That hell, that made me cry. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, moving on from that, Willow and Chase. That's 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 couple number one that did not do it right for Valentine's Day. They did it partly right because they went out to dinner, but that conversation that they were having was just a no for me. It was just a bunch of awkward ass conversation between them. I'm like, this is romantic. This this is romance. And she threw me off. Like Willow, I, I was under the impression Willow ain't no gold digger, but she was throwing me off on Friday's episode though. Because she kept talking about all the stuff Michael bought her and the renovations. I'm like. Willow, what are you doing? I ain't saying she a gold digger, but she ain't messing with no broke. I'm just saying. Like, that was not conversation I would want on Valentine's Day. I don't want you sitting across from me and I'm paying for dinner. And you sitting here talking about a whole nother man. No, absolutely not. Chase is better than me because I would have got up and excused my ass from that table. Or better better yet, I would have excused her ass from the table. You ain't about to say, go, well, go over to that man and tell him to pay for your dinner. Since he buying you everything. Chase, Chase, you better man up. I'm just saying. So anyway, moving on from that. Michael and Sasha. Couple number two that did not do it right. They didn't do shit for Valentine's Day. They were sitting at the hospital the whole time worrying about Brando. I'm like, er? Is this what y'all doing? What, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? This, this is how you spend Valentine's Day? Michael, they need to do better by Michael. Because let me tell you something, Chad is a good actor. I feel like he is, but I feel like he's wasted. His character is so wasted. What are y'all doing? Michael, Michael, a quarter main, Spencer, Vincent, Corinthos, like, are you serious? Did I say that? Quarter main, Corinthos, Benson, Spencer. Would have been Corinthos Benz. Okay, I said all his last names, right? Okay, so you connected to all these fans. This is what y'all doing with him? Like, y'all don't have nothing edgy for him to do? The most edge I seen for Michael was when him and Sonny was beefing. That's the most edge, and that's when I liked him. Don't get me wrong, I still like Michael, but damn, do something with him. Like, this is what y'all got? Michael deserves, Chad deserves better. Come on now. Um, he spent his Valentine's Day in the hospital and then had to go home to check on Wiley because Wiley was acting up. So, you know, Sasha ended up calming Wiley down and stuff. I said, go ahead, Sasha. You showing your motherly instinct. I know that's right. Um, so, of course, her and Michael started talking about her drug addiction and stuff. And, you know, she swore to him that she doesn't have the desire to go back to that life. Well, plenty of addicts say that, you know, no, no shade. But it's like, you know, you got to show better than you can tell. Um... So, you know, Michael feel like they need to start over and he needs to learn how to trust her again. I do agree because, you know, there is a child involved and we don't need no druggies around the child now. So I totally understand where Michael is coming from. Like, he got to be able to trust you first. And here goes another awkward moment. Him and Sasha was about to kiss and here come Chase and Willow walking through the damn door. I said, this shit is too awkward. I'm sorry, but Ch like I said, Chase is better than me because I would have been telling her, like, sweetie, you going to have to move up out of there because if we going to fix this and we going to get together and be a couple, you got to move out this man's house. Well, this man's grandmother's house. Like, you got to get on up out of here because this ain't working for me. Like, And then when, when Chase and, and Sasha left, Willow and Michael went to go watching a movie together. I said, what the fuck? 
what? Y'all both just got off dates. Mind you, they were incredibly stupid, boring dates, but dates nonetheless. And y'all go shack up and watch a movie together? <sighs> Lord have mercy. The writers, get this shit together. Anyway, so Portia and Curtis. If I was Jordan, I would feel some type of way. Like, shouldn't she be on the phone calling her man on Valentine's Day trying to find out where he at? Like, it's love day. And, he, and Curtis is over here with her. He over here with Portia. That's the day that you spend with your boo, with your wife, your girl, your scrape. Something, you know, however people call their significant other nowadays. I'm like, and you spending it with Portia? I mean, I understand it was supposed to be friendly and whatnot. He was working the case, but still, you spent Valentine's Day with a whole nother woman that ain't your wife. You wearing a ring that belongs to a whole nother person, but you here with this person. Dr. Phil, Oprah, I need somebody to come fix this. Jesus, I need somebody to come fix this. Like, absolutely the hell not. Curtis, what are you doing, sir? I understand you're angry with your wife. I get it, but this is Valentine's Day. You could have sent her a rose or something. Uh, a, a, a handmade homemade note would have been nice damn a phone call like happy valentine's day so, like damn this, i'm not liking this <laughs> i'm not liking this like where's the love damn it where's the love my lord where where's the love just curtis player you can't go find your wife and just Hug up on her and give her some loving. Even like angry loving. I mean, that's better than no loving at all. I mean, you know, like a quick little wham, bam, thank you, man. Something. You over here with her. When you should be over there trying to fix that. Curtis. I ain't mad per se because I get, like I said, I get it. You know, he got every right to be upset. But damn, bro. You out here. Listen. So Curtis was having a good old time with Portia. He he admitted that to Portia. He was like, I'm having a great time. No, you should not be having a great time on Valentine's Day with another woman that ain't your wife. I'm just saying that rubs me wrong. Like, go get your wife. Curtis. Go. Jordan's over there. You're not supposed to be over here. You're supposed to be over there. I guess. Damn. So anyway. I guess the club or restaurant, whatever the hell it is, I guess that's up for sale. So Curtis is thinking about buying it. I thought him and Jordan were in a financial pickle. How you got money to buy this place? I guess. But um, I'm happy for Curtis. If he does go ahead and buy it, you know, that could be a new career for him as a club owner or whatever. Good kudos to him. You know, that could be a whole new career. Um, But you, but Curtis, seriously, get get over there. Now, don't sit over here. Just get back to there. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, TJ finally shows up to the commitment ceremony. Um, and Chris, um, TJ and Molly signed the paperwork for their to solidify their domestic partnership. I'm like, do you really sign paperwork? I never knew that. That's something I don't think I've ever knew. You have to sign paperwork for domestic partnership. Let me know in the comments. I didn't know that. I'm late to the party. I never knew that. Hmm. I guess. Um. So TJ thought that it would feel more special than what it really was, but you know Molly was making him all type of promises about you know like he's her forever and whatever, whatever. I said, okay, Molly, just you know, I'm willing to give you a second chance, Molly, because I like you. But just remember, in the future, whenever you and TJ have problems, don't go dropping your drawers for the first man that you see. I'm just saying, Molly, keep it on, keep them bridges on. I'm just saying. So anyway, moving on from that, Franco and Liz. Oh, my God. I felt so bad. And I never thought I would say that about Franco, but I felt bad for Franco. He was even too tired to make love to his wife. He just he ain't even had energy. I felt bad that they had to spend their anniversary slash Valentine's Day the way that they did. Coming to a restaurant, folks walking out like that's just the the the, the audacity, the disrespect. Um. But, you know, Liz reassured him. She was like, yo, we're going to have plenty of, of days. Like, we're going to have plenty of time to make love and do honeymoons and everything else that we want to do. I love how Liz is so supportive of her man. Like, he's been going through a lot. And it's like, she's just been there for him. That's what I'm talking about. That's that's what a wife is supposed to do. So, 
you know, Cameron, Trina, Jocelyn, they put up a banner. They went all out to kind of, you know, surprise Liz and Franco. But um, when it came time for Cam to sing a song, you know, he just got upset and just ran away to the bathroom. And he basically told Jocelyn and Trina to cut his hair. Like he wanted to cut his hair to um, support Franco with him losing his hair. Trina didn't want to do it. She didn't want to do it. But he insisted that she do it. So, of course, when they were finished, they warned Franco and Liz that, uh, you know, it was something was happening. So, Franco and Liz were shocked when Cameron came down and, you know, he had his hair cut. But they appreciated it. You know, they were so proud of him for doing that, you know, showing his support that way. Um, But my whole thing is for all that belly aching that Trina um, and Jocelyn was doing about Cam cutting his hair and all this, that, and the third... I was expecting Cameron to walk down there bald, bald as shit. Like, just bald than an eagle. I'm like, y'all did all that fat mouthing for no reason. He ain't even bald. It's more like a damn military crew cut. Yeah, it's like a little military looking haircut. I thought he was going to come down like OD, just bald as shit. Um, but I love this episode. I did. I liked it. It was a cool, fun episode. I had a good time laughing at it because it was funny as shit. But um, anyway, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see y'all all later. Have a good day. Oh, have a good night. Peace.